No kids, well, there are a lot of kids here. We're just a little bit older kids, amen? amen. There was a, a couple celebrating their, I thought of this, you telling me about your birthdays are like days apart, and, and uh, there was a couple celebrating their 60th birthday. They both were turning 60 years old, and a married couple, and a, a genie appeared and gave them wishes, each a wish, and the woman she wished to travel. She said, I really want to travel with my husband around the world. And poof, all of a sudden, tickets for traveling around the world were in her hands. <laughs> then the husband said, I wish I had a wife 30 years younger than me. <laughs> and poof, he was 90. <laughs> so we have to be careful what we wish for, and sometimes change comes in the wrong way. Amen? So my topic for my reflection today is change and changing our minds. In the first reading today, we hear Ezekiel talk about the, our need to change, how we have to consciously decide to change and to follow God. Ezekiel wrote what he wrote 600 years before Jesus was born, and yet he's telling us what we need to do, that it has to be our decision to make that change to follow God. And then Paul tells us that uh, to be people who follow, we have to learn to put other people first, make other people more important than ourselves, stop focusing on ourselves. Did you know that everybody that came to Jesus in Scripture, their life changed? Everybody. Sometimes small ways change a mind, change a heart, change a thinking. Others, big ways, they, they were deaf and then they could hear, they were blind, then they could see, they were lame, then they could walk. And Lazarus, I mean, he was dead and he came back. So everyone changed one way or another, and we are called to change. In the gospel today, we hear the story of the a father who goes to his two sons, and he says, I want you to go right now. He didn't ask, he didn't say, are you willing to? He told them an order, <laughs> go into the vineyard and work. And the first son said, uh, no. And the second son said, yes. Well, the one that said yes changed and decided he wasn't going to go. And the one that said no changed his mind and decided to go into the vineyard. And then Jesus asked the question, which one of those was doing the will of God? The one that said yes and then didn't or the one that said no and then went? I ask you. The one that said no and then went. And then Jesus points out that um, the um, people who were following John the Baptist were people like the prostitutes and the, and the sinners and the tax collectors. And they're going to get to heaven before the priests and the rabbis because the priests and the rabbis might wear the right kind of clothes. They might say the right kinds of things. They might have the right kind of friends, but they're not living life correctly. Whereas the prostitutes and the, the sinners and the tax collectors, they listened to John. They heard the message and they changed their life. They changed the direction of their life. And that's what we're called to do not be afraid to make that change in our own lives. Because if we're unwilling to do that, then God looks at us and says, well, if you're not willing to change for me, why do you think that I'm going to want to bring you to my home for all eternity? We have to be open to change in our lives. If we ask ourselves, why won't we change? What do you think the answer is? Pride, it's ego. What keeps us from changing? What keeps us from, as Paul calls us, to put others first? What prevents us from doing that? It's because we want to put ourselves first. We think we're more important. And what Jesus is saying, no, you're not. You are called to follow me, and that means you have to take up your own cross, and that means you have to change the direction of your life and start doing the things I've called you to do. Amen? Now, Ezekiel, as I said, 600 years before Jesus is telling us it has to be a conscious decision to make that change. Now, when I performed Judas Iscariot, as you know, Judas hangs himself. One time when I was performing Judas many years ago, a young boy came up to me afterwards and he said, Mr. Price, he said, this is about the third time I've seen you do Judas. And he said, we have a, a painting at home. And I asked my mom if she'd help me. And we took a picture of the painting. 
and it's a paint, and then he gave me a, a copy, a print of the picture. It's a picture of Judas hanging himself, but Jesus is underneath him holding him up. So just as the rope is getting tight around his neck, Jesus is holding him up, saying, come back to me, Judas, come back to me. It's not too late, come back to me. You see, that's the kind of God we have, the kind of God that loves us. No matter what we've done, no matter how bad we've been, even Judas, who did all that he did to turn Jesus in and resulted in that horrible death and on crucifixion of Jesus, Jesus is still saying, come back to me, come back to me, come back to me. I will welcome you with open arms. Remember the movie, The Passion of the Christ? There's this wonderful scene where Jesus has been uh, uh, arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. And as they're taking him away in chains, they're going across a bridge. And somehow Jesus gets knocked over the side of the bridge. And he's dangling there by the ropes or chains. And he comes face to face with this person cowering under the bridge. And who was it? Judas. And here is in the movie... And I don't think one word is spoken. It's Jesus hanging there looking eye to eye with Judas. Not one word is spoken. But the eyes are saying, come, come back to me, Judas. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter how bad you've been. Doesn't matter how many times you've failed. Come back to me. Come back to me. Come back to me. And what does Judas do in the movie? I think it's so powerful. He turns his eyes away from Jesus. And that's when, if you remember the movie, when all the little devils started coming in, is when he turned his eyes away from Jesus. When Peter is on that boat and the storm is up and they hear Jesus coming on the water, remember walking on water? And, Je and, and Peter hears him, and what does Peter do? Dummy Peter, he steps out onto the water and starts walking to Jesus. But what happens? At one point, he takes his eyes off Jesus, and he sinks. And he sinks. What we're called to do is to change the direction of our life so we put our eyes, our focus, our attention on Jesus. And we do that by challenging ourselves, as Ezekiel calls us to do, to live our lives under the will of God. Amen to that? So if we do that, I'll end with this. If the kids were here, I was going to do a little uh, um, fun thing with them, but you'll have to come back for that. Um, but I was going to give them a homework assignment, so I'll give it to you. One way to help us to learn how to turn our lives to change toward Jesus is every night before you go to bed, here's your homework assignment. Five minutes, just five minutes. Think about the last 24 hours. Think about the day you had. Think about every aspect of the day. And ask yourself, are the things I did today in line with the teachings and the will of God? Ask yourself that as you just spend five minutes before you go to sleep in bed. Did I do the will of God today? And if you say to yourself, no, I didn't, then talk yourself into changing. Talk yourself into making a difference tomorrow. See, we're always going to have tomorrow until we don't. <laughs> but as long as we have tomorrow, let's take advantage of that. Amen. And live our lives for God. Thank you for listening. Song. Thank you very, very much. Excellent, excellent, excellent. God bless you for that. There was something I forgot. As Father said, I'm 50 years in ministry now, so I have a right to forget things. I, <laughs> but this is very important to me, so I wanted to come back up and say this. When you read Scripture, as important as the words are, as important as the stories are, sometimes it's as important and maybe even more important when that story was told. The story you heard today, the gospel, Jesus talking about the father telling his sons, go do this, and one says no, and then says yes. When he called them to change, this was said by Jesus on Tuesday of what we call Holy Week. So he had just come into town on Palm Sunday. On Monday, he went and visited his friends Lazarus, Mary, and Martha in, in Bethany. And now Tuesday, he's back in Jerusalem. He knows that two days later he's going to be arrested and three days later he's going to be murdered, horribly murdered on that cross. So he knows he's about to die and yet he takes time to tell us 
What's important is to change, to change your mind, to change your hearts. So the timing of it is important. Jesus did not want to die in two days without reminding us to change our lives, to change our hearts, to change our thinking. Amen? Amen. The, great, the great Protestant preacher and professional baseball player, Billy Sunday, said, going to church alone makes you a Christian about as much as going in the garage makes you a car. <laughs> so let's be open to change. Amen? Amen. Amen.